This is Daughters of Destiny, and we welcome you to the Destiny family. Those who are joining us for the first time, we welcome you. Today, we want to look at how do you become a person of influence. I'll recommend the book by John Maxwell to you, How to Be a Person of Influence. How do you become a person of influence? Uh, I want us to look at the story of Jesus using the case study of Jesus. How did Jesus become a person of influence? So much so that right now we're still talking about him. There is the kingdom of God that is all wrapped up around the person of Jesus. There is a model that gives a pathway, a roadmap. If you want to become a person of influence, there are certain things you need to do on certain levels. And that's why I recommend the book by John Maxwell. We'll be sharing some of those excerpts and then looking at the life of Jesus and seeing how we can glean from all these examples as we proceed. The process of becoming a person of influence. The first level is the level of you being a model. So level one, model or identity so i have added first level your identity slash your model so let's look at john chapter number one verse four and verse 14 in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it so let's look at verse 14 and the word became flesh Okay, I want to start from John 1 verse 1 so we can understand it. Let's go back. John chapter number 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So this is a description of of a person or a phenomenon called the word it says in the beginning there was the word so this is the identity of christ so let's come to verse number 14. it now says this word now became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as the one begotten of the father full of grace glory be to god so that's jesus the word the identity is the word of god so the first level, Jesus is the word, the life, the light of men, the one that shines. The identity of Jesus is what determined his influence. Yeah, his identity determined his influence. Your identity will determine the kind of influence you're going to have. So as many that encounter Jesus received life, as many that encountered him received salvation, today in his name, we are still saved. Glory be to God. If you want to become a person of influence, your identity must be defined. What do you stand for? Well, this is Jesus. And so the first level is the level of model. People must experience you or see you, know what you stand for. They must know about you. What will they know about you is your identity. And this is what we all know about Jesus. So come with me to the book of this same John chapter number two. So here is Jesus coming on the scene, okay? John chapter number two. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to be with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servant, whatever he says to you, do it, okay? So here was a wedding. They didn't quite know about Jesus. But in that wedding, they experienced a miracle, which is an embodiment of the identity of Jesus because he's the light of men. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He turns situations around. So in that wedding of Cana of Galilee, they experienced what Jesus stood for. They experienced him as the life as the way, as the truth, as the one that turns things around. So they didn't know him. So watch this. When we are talking about the first level of you becoming a person of influence, that you've got to have an identity, build your identity. What should we know you for? What is it about you? Me, I'm not a banker now. I can't influence anybody in banking. That's not my identity. So you've got to, like they say, 
well, maybe in marketing terms, what's your brand? What's your life brand? For you to become a person of influence, hone your skills, develop your identity, develop what you stand for. So you model it to people. As you are online, they know this is what you stand for. If you tune in, if you follow me on Instagram, what do I stand for? You will hear prayers. You will hear me sharing the word. You will see me sharing wisdom nuggets. That's my identity. You cannot become a person of influence if you're here or there doing this, doing that. But people will not be able to place you and know what you stand for. You won't be a voice to reckon with because they don't know what to expect from you. That first level is you developing who you are. And of course, you cannot have an identity if you have not discovered yourself. If you don't know who you are, you got to know who you are. There must be self-discovery. You must know your purpose for you to strongly carve out who you are and go for it. So if I've not accepted the fact that I'm a pastor, then I will not be able to do what I'm doing with full throttle. So you've got to know who you are. Discover yourself. Discover your purpose. That's the beginning. So once people know your model, who you are, anywhere you go, they know your model. Anywhere you see me, I will pray. Me, I will pray. That's my model. Let me just quickly say this. People are first influenced by what they see about you. What is it that people are seeing? That's your model. That's your identity. When you meet people you don't know, they will have no influence on you. Okay? The only way that people you don't know can be influenced by you is if someone introduces you to them. That's what the mother of Jesus did. Somebody is endorsing you. Uh -uh. You don't know Apostle Salah Jagede. Uh -uh. She, she can speak at your conference. So this person doesn't know me. There were two ladies, they were in Atlanta. They went for a pastor's conference. And so at the pastor's conference, they were talking. One of them, a pastor, they have a church in Nigeria. And she was telling the other pastor, ah, well, I'm going to Nigeria. We're going to do a women's conference. I'm looking for a female minister to invite. Then the other one said, ah, invite Apostle Pusola He said, who is Apostle Pusola? I don't know her. You don't know Apostle Pusola Look at her Instagram page. So she says, she goes to my Instagram page, started researching me. And their topic was soaring high. And more, I have written a book called Soaring High. So what that pastor did was to endorse me to this person. She eventually invited me to her church last year. And we did the conference. And she has invited me again. So I was able to influence her. And the people in her church, they were able to benefit from my influence because of my model, my identity. It fitted what she wanted. And I could influence her. She didn't know me because somebody endorsed me. Glory be to God. May somebody endorse you. Take that prayer right now. Shakatale Brigade, Ikasete, Jolobokoto. May somebody endorse me to platforms where I am not known. In the name of Jesus, may somebody endorse me. May somebody endorse me. May somebody speak about me. May somebody introduce me to platforms where I'm not known. In Jesus' name. So we're still talking about level one modeling. That's exactly what the woman at the well did. She ran inside. Hey, I have met a man who told me everything. Somebody endorse you in Jesus' name. So many things now help many people in this modeling process for people to know about them. What else can help to endorse you to people who don't know you? Social media, especially a lot of celebrities. So they keep posting stuff about themselves. When people are posting stuff about themselves, don't think, eh, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? It's a form of endorsement. People can read about you and meet you before they see you. And so they can know whether your model fits what they want. And then you can be of influence. And you know, I told you yesterday, influence brings value. We have influencers. That use their influence to get money. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes. Your influence starts from your image, your identity. What do you stand for? Your model. And people will see you from afar. Know what you stand for before we go to the next level. So everyone, go and build your brand. Go and work on your model. If you're a teacher, let us know you're a teacher. Let us know what you do. Package it well so that if endorsement comes by social media, we can check you out and know what you stand for and make a decision whether you will influence us with your brand. And that can translate to money for you. Next, if you want to be a person of influence, the next level after modeling is motivation. When you want to get to the level of motivation, 
you know you carry an identity and a substance. You now begin to use that to motivate people. Glory be to God. You use your identity to motivate people. So what I'm doing now, I'm motivating you. It's on a general level. That's why you have people they call motivational speakers. Glory be to God. Please share this broadcast. So if you want to be a person of influence, you begin to create a bridge between you and people. There has to be a bridge between you and people. There must be a way you deliver to people. Okay, you are good. Okay, you're fantastic. Okay, you've built your brand, but we don't know. We don't know. You're not communicating. We don't know how to reach you. We don't know how to see you. We don't know how to hear about you. So you begin to motivate people, meaning you connect with people. You speak words. You use your brand to lift them up, to say something that's going to encourage them, to inspire them. Then you begin to have influence in their lives. Glory be to Jesus. So... When people feel good about you and about themselves, then you have influence in their lives. Your level of influence has increased. So if you come on the broadcast and I'm speaking and what I've said or what I've shared has made you to go back to your own space and be a better person, I've motivated you. So motivation is the next level. Motivate people. As you motivate people, whether they come to you for advice, whether you meet them in whatever level, make sure you motivate them. You inspire them. You encourage them with your brand, with what you carry. Then you will be a voice they want to listen to. They know that when they spend their time with you, they will be better. So motivation is the second level for you to be a person of influence. Glory be to God. If we look at the life of Jesus, who can tell me a typical example of of a time Jesus was motivating. Beatitudes. He gathered a lot of people. The Beatitudes. Blessed is he. You know, he took them out. That was a large crowd. And he began to teach them. He began to speak to them. He began to teach them. People were inspired by what the Lord was teaching. That made them to go with him. And that was why when they had been there, there was no food. He had to say they should go and look for food. And there was that miracle of the bread and the fishes and having 12 baskets left over. They were motivated. That was why they could go. John the Baptist was also baptizing and motivating people. That was why people went to the wilderness to meet him. When you motivate people, you influence them, you attract them. Because they know that when they come, they will be inspired. Then they will catch a fire that they are going to carry away that will make them to be a better person or better in what they do. Glory be to God. So we see examples of Jesus motivating people. He was by the seashore. He borrowed the boat of Peter and he was teaching the people. When you teach, you are motivating people. You're imparting knowledge. But it is still the bridge you have created is the value you're giving and it is from you to them and to a large number. That means to that large number, you have influence. Next, for you to have a model is fantastic. You must have an identity and that's the beginning. Then you begin to motivate people. You are influencing them. There will be people you will have followers. You have people that will follow you. That's fantastic. But there's a, another higher level of you having influence. And that's the level of mentoring. So you now begin to see people one-on-one -on -one and you begin to connect with people to take them higher. So when you reach the level of motivational level of influence, you can start to see a positive impact in the lives of the people. And you want to make it long-lasting. That's why we mentor people. A lot of people can come to church. A lot of people can be motivated. But not everybody will have a lasting impact. So my influence in the lives of the people that just come to listen on a Monday morning, maybe a congregation of 200 or 500 is different from the influence I have on the level of people I've brought close and mentoring them and mentoring them and watching over the steps of their lives. So my influence in the lives of those people is higher to make the positive impact long lasting. You have to move from the level of just motivating people to mentoring, mentor them. So mentoring is you pouring your life in other people and helping them to reach their potential. So there's a whole teaching on the relationship between the mentor and the protege. There's a protocol surrounding it. If you want to be mentored, 
and you want to make maximum benefit of what your mentor is teaching you, you've got to be teachable. You've got to know that you have to respect timing. You must not be too familiar with your mentor. You must know that your mentor may not be a perfect person, but it's perfect for what you need. You must not come to your mentor with a judgmental spirit, otherwise you can't learn. Mentors give you handles. Mentors give you wings to fly. Mentors will help you where you're supposed to be stuck at a crossroad. A mentor will tell you, watch out, watch that place. And then a mentor carries you on the back and helps you to move swiftly. So you make good progress because you have a mentor. And so the person who is doing that has a lot of influence in your life. And so don't think, why is this person controlling my life? If the person is your mentor. It will look as if the person is controlling your life. <laughs> You know, the devil may even make you feel, ah, you better be careful. No, that's the work of a mentor. My mentor has told me some very tough things, but I thank God he told me those things. You yourself, you may judge some things your mentor is doing too. So you must guard that relationship. Yes, the person has influence over your life. People can tell you this person is the one controlling you. No, the person has influence over your life because the person wants to make sure that the positive impact is long lasting. In a congregation of 500, I've preached in a lot of places before. I'm not their mentor. I just went there to motivate them. I'm not their mentor. Your mentor is somebody you can reach when you have a problem. If you listen to T.D. Jakes, it's just motivating you. It's not your mentor. If you have a problem, you don't know his phone number. He's a role model. You know, we said model. T.D. Jakes is a role model. Mention somebody else. You say, oh, Pisha Boyedeko is my mentor. Do you know his phone number? <laughs> If your husband is giving you tough time, can you call him and say, see, my husband said I shouldn't preach again. What do I do? That's a mentor. You have access. You have role models. You can listen to messages that will inspire you. Apostle Joshua Selma is not your mentor. He is your role model. Because you, you can't reach him if you have a problem. Glory be to God. When we're talking about influence, so it is different when Apostle Joshua Selma has a son or a daughter that is watching over her life stage by stage do this do that and that person is obeying so the power of mentoring is so strong that you can actually see the lives of the persons you are influencing change before your eyes i've seen that in the life of so many people as you give of yourself helping them overcome obstacles sometimes people may think i'm overbearing but i'm just a mother a mentor is a mother hen you're like a mother hen. So as you give of yourself, you help them to overcome obstacles in their lives, showing them how to grow personally and professionally. You help them achieve a whole new level of living. You can truly make a difference in their lives. And so you're going to be a person of influence in the life of your mentees, your protégés. Please share this broadcast. So if you want to be a person of influence and you are somebody that, ah, I can't allow people to know what I know. They will know more than me. You can't be a person of influence. you got to be selfless. You must cross that hurdle in your mind. The success of my protege or my mentee is my pride. And I mentor them that they must never ever be too familiar or have pride in their heart. You have to be guiding them because the human mind, your mentee can be richer than you or have more things than you. And you must not be moved by that. You must know that the success of this person is my success. And you must drum it into the ears of your mentee. Don't ever let this thing come into your mind. Yoruba people say, Omadi on lasho, to agba kotu la kisa to agba. Even though you are doing all these things, never ever let it get to your head. One day that you think you will rub shoulder with your mentor. Abraham and Lot, from where to where? You are telling me to choose you, my mentor. How can I be choosing? Daddy, anything you give me, I will take it. Just bless me. That should be your attitude. Because your mentor has poured her life into your own so that you can be greater. And so when you are indeed moving higher, don't ever bite the finger that fed you and pushed you. If somebody is pushing you up, the person is under you. The person is pushing you up with everything. So if you're somebody that you can't share, you, you feel threatened, or somebody that you cannot overcome bitterness, you cannot overcome pain, because people will betray you. People will do terrible things to you. You're going to help people, and they won't pay you back. You're going to help people and they can betray you and turn against you. But you must not allow that. If you want to continue to be a person of influence, you cannot allow that to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Glory be to God. So level three is what? Mentoring. When you are a mentor, you are a person of influence. So if you see me, you are not just seeing me. You are seeing me with the influence I carry. And the good thing for you as a mentor is to know your value is not only in what you carry. My value is in the value that all my children carry because I have influence over them. 
in their lives and they also have influence over my life. If I need something for something, I may not have it, but my mentee can have it. And because I've positively influenced the person, the person will release it. So you're such a powerful person. When you're a person of influence, people may look at you and say, and no, I'm much more than this. I'm an extension of all those that my life has touched in America, in Canada, in UK, in Nigeria, in different places, in different families. So my social capital, watch this. When you are a person of influence, your social capital is very big. Your social capital, your network is very big. And your social capital can deliver to you finances, value, access, connections, just because of your social capital. So you're larger than who you are. So if somebody is judging you by who they see, they've missed it. A person of influence has a high social capital. Remember what we said, you want to be a person of influence, number one, your identity and your model. Number two, motivate people. Number three, you now begin to mentor. When it comes to mentoring now, you only mentor the people that submit themselves to you. Uh -huh. You know, there are some people now, they cannot say, Usala Jagede, I'm her mentor. I, I will be looking from where to where. I know who my mentor is. So mentoring is a unique relationship of mutual submission and acceptance. You go to somebody, please mentor me. We have an agreement. It's not mentoring from the air. So an acquaintance may not be your mentor. Somebody you're just meeting. You have not submitted to the person. The person cannot claim you and say, I am her mentor. I am your mentor. Because you didn't submit yourself to that person. So it's got to be a conscious relationship. If I'm listening to your message, you are motivating me. You are a role model. You may not know my name. Your mentor must know your name. He must know you. There must be access. So the next level is the highest level you get to if you want to be a person of influence. And that's the level of multiplying, multiplying. The highest level of influence you can have in the life of others is the multiplication level. Quickly, let me backtrack. How many people did Jesus mentor? Please write in the chat, write in the chat. There were thousands that he motivated and <laughs> he taught. But who are the people that he mentored? Please, somebody write it. He mentored the 12 disciples. He mentored them. They were with him. He asked them questions. Who do people say I am? He knew their name. Personally, Peter's mother-in-law that was sick was healed. He knew them. He impacted on them. Those were his call. And it was from there that Peter arose to lead the church after Jesus ascended, before Paul came along. He poured himself into the 12. Glory be to God. If you want to be a person of influence, apart from modeling, apart from motivating people, apart from mentoring people, the, the fourth level of influence you're going to have, the highest level that you become a person of influence is multiplying. This is the highest level of influence you have in other people's lives. As a multiplying influencer, you help people that you are influencing to become positive influences in the life of others. To pass on not only what they have received from you, but also what they have learned and gleaned on their own. So few people ever make it to this fourth level. So let's look at the Bible. There's an example of a multiplier. Apostle Paul, there's that scripture. He said, the things you are hearing from me, teach to able men who are able to teach others. That's multiplying. Everything you are hearing from me, teach to able men who are able to teach others. So, the first level, you that you are hearing it from me, you that are mentoring, look for able men, the next level, able men, and then let the able men teach others, level four. I am here. Those of you who are hearing what you are hearing from me, those of you hearing from me now, those of you are mentoring, look for able men. Go and get able men. Let the able men teach others multiplication. Glory be to God. Jesus also did it. There was the time of the 12 and there was the time of the 70. He trained 12. Then there was a time he gathered 70 people and he sent them out. So it was no longer about the 12. It became about the 70. And then the third one, he said, everybody to the uttermost end of the earth. He gave the commission. So what's the commission, the great commission that Jesus gave at the end of his ministry? Let's look at that in the scriptures. Matthew 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded. Lo, I am with you always, 
even to the end of the earth. That's the multiplier in Jesus. So, becoming a person of influence, using the model of Jesus, we saw him, his identity. He started from the place of identity. From the place of identity. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God. Jesus he began to manifest his identity. We saw it in Cana of Galilee. He was endorsed by his mother. Also, another endorsement came for Jesus at the modeling stage. At the modeling stage, when people didn't know him, the endorsement came from John the Baptist. Immediately, he saw Jesus. He said, here comes the Lamb of God. This one, I am not worthy to remove his sandals. Endorsement. People didn't know who he was. He was baptized in the Jordan. The voice of endorsement came. This is my beloved son. That was the first level. And that's where we're going to start our prayer. My father and my God, endorse me. Shakatala bayata. Endorse me, O God. La rebo shotolikata. Make me a person of influence. Endorse me. Endorse me. In the name of Jesus, Rabba Yata Laba, I will fulfill my mandate. I will discover my calling. I will discover my purpose. And I will run with it. In the name of Jesus, somebody share this broadcast. Somebody needs to watch this. You want to become a person of influence, lift up your voice. My identity will not be hidden. In the name of Jesus, I will model that which heaven has crafted me for. In the name of Jesus, we said the second thing from you modeling is to motivate Oh, Father, give me the grace to be able to raise others, to inspire others, that my life will bring joy to others in the name of Jesus, that what I carry, my assignment will lift others up. In the name of Jesus, my assignment will raise people. Shakatali Bregede, Marine Zandala was the next one. We said mentoring. Oh, Lord, I call forth daughters and sons in the name of Jesus make my life a positive impact in the life of others in the name of Jesus open my eyes give me the grace give me the ability some people cannot share some people are so stingy in their spirit it's their spirit that is stingy they can't share anything Ah, but you cannot. You can't, you can't carry certain things to the grave. You have to die empty. Give me the grace to be able to raise people, to mentor people in the name of Jesus. Last but not the least, help me to multiply the grace. Oh, la boche toro. Hey, do you know Elijah? He was taking the mantle to heaven. He didn't give the mantle to Elisha until the thing dropped. Elisha, he didn't raise somebody. He cursed his servant. There are many times we make mistakes in the journey of life. Elijah's own was, he was a very hard man. Somebody who has been serving you since. You are asking, what do you want from me? What do you want? That man kept following you, following you before you could even bless him. Some people are stingy with blessing. They are stingy in giving. He didn't want to bless him. He said, oh, he, he, except you see me when I'm being carried. All the one he has been seeing you and serving you since. Why don't you just bless him? And he was even worse. His servant, Gehazi, he cursed him. And so, you're going to lift up your voice. Any limitation in my person, any limitation in my character that will not allow me to be a person of influence. Sometimes some things are in our character. Some of us, we grow up so hard. It's like you're a mother-in-law and your husband showed you pepe. When you see your son loving the wife, there's something in you that will be resisting it because you enjoy that. There are some of us, we go through hardship. And when we see that, it is easier for other people. Sometimes we, res we don't like it. But that's not right. Lift up your voice, Father. Remove every character deficiency from me. In the name of Jesus, make me a multiplier. I will be a person of positive influence. In Jesus' much less name. Amen. Glory be to God. The Lord bless you abundantly in the mighty name of Jesus. And on that note, God bless you all.